Hello, it's a pleasure to be with you. My name is Aline Jama Rutherford. I'm the Vice Provost Academic Affairs at the University of Ottawa. And Jovan? Yes, I'm Jovan Groen, and I, uh, in Aline's office, am a Senior Analyst in Research and Impact Evaluation. So we are here to tell the story, uh, the story of the University of Ottawa from the perspective of the students, the professors, the teaching assistants, uh, the experience of uh, transition from a face-to-face -face, uh, um, uh, classroom environment to a remote and online uh, instruction. Yeah, so we're going to do this uh, through a few tenants here, Alin. Uh, I think you're going to speak to the context uh, of the survey and of the institution. We'll chat a little bit about the development of the survey, its findings, and then uh, uh, actions and recommendations that stem. So let's start off, Alin. Thank you. So what about the context? So uh, University of Ottawa is a mid-sized university. We have around 44,000 students, and out of these students, uh, 44,000 students, we have uh, around 18 to 19 percent of international students. Uh, so a diverse population. Uh, we are bilingual, so we also have uh, Anglophone and Francophone students. Uh, we have around 3,000 professors and we offer per year around 6,000 courses. So as I said, a lot of diversity and when the pandemic arrived and we needed to uh, transition from, as I said, face-to-face -face, uh, uh, teaching and learning, we uh, had to go 100% online in just one week. We uh, had to deal uh, with this uh, uh, diversity and also the fact that the University of Ottawa uh, was not, before the pandemic, uh, a university used to offer online courses. I mean, uh, uh, before the pandemic, we had all, only around 2% of our courses which were online. Uh, so we had to learn quick. Uh, we had to transition very uh, quickly, but it was a radical uh, transformation for us. Uh, online distance was not in our DNA and we had to do it in uh, two languages. We had to address the needs of our international students at the same time as our Canadian students. So it has been quite an adventure and we wanted to better understand uh, how, uh, our, as I said, students, professors, teaching assistants lived this adventure. That's why we, uh, uh, has, uh, we have uh, developed tools to uh, better understand uh, their own uh, experience. Yeah, this, this survey development was driven by just that, what Aline was saying, a, a, a need to understand the impact of this transition on all members of our instructional community, right? So the instructors, the students, and the teaching assistants, and to understand how we can better scaffold them in the transitions to come, given that this is the reality here this fall and again uh, this coming winter. Um, to better understand their experience also lets us know what they used in terms of educational technology, how they used it, whether there's technologies that we don't have at our institution that we should be adopting, uh, what types of instructional approaches they favored, uh, that is to say students, uh, or that were feasible and efficient in terms of preparation uh, for instructors. Um, you know, what support training or resources would, would help scaffold them better and enhance the experience for, for all those involved. These are some of the thoughts that were underpinning this, this uh, uh, survey. And it was a very collaborative and expedited, but a very participatory process with um, various members of our community in terms of uh, support staff and instructors and faculties and, and various others. So the questions naturally followed. We asked about that experience, uh, uh, technology, instruction, but also the challenges they experienced and how they overcame those. And in terms of the supports, what were they aware of? What did they use? What, were, what was most helpful? Um, so that in mind, we had the three surveys, the first of which was the instructor survey done in mid-May to about, uh, uh, which was responded to by about over a thousand uh, instructors of a total of 2,000 who uh, were uh, teaching in the fall and spring semesters. In terms of students, uh, only those who were enrolled in the winter and spring uh, were included. 
but uh, that was a total of 42,000 uh, uh, um, in terms of population. We had respondents from about a, a quarter of those or just over that. And then half uh, of uh, uh, nearly 2,000 TAs who were contracted at that time. Um, and so we learned a lot from the instructor survey, which we then uh, used to build the, uh, the student and the TA surveys. So in terms of overview of findings, we'll go in each section, one after the other here. But note that we're going to share the original uh, summaries with you, so you'll be able to dig deeper into those. We're just going to give you a snapshot here in the time we have today. So in terms of people who had the first time experience with this, this transition uh, to distance and online, it was the first time for over 50% of, of, our, of our community. So in terms of instructors, 66% of instructors first time instructing in a, in a digital distance and online modality. Uh, students a little bit less, 56, we're doing this for the first time, but quite a bit for TAs at 91%. In terms of the student transition, uh, we were quite concerned about uh, levels of accessibility in terms of internet access and whether they had the tools uh, to be able to connect in this type of modality. That's the first two colors, blue and orange here. We saw this to be over 75%, but across different groupings of that population, uh, undergraduate, graduate, Canadian and international students, uh, little uh, difference was observed there. In terms of whether they felt supported and they felt prepared for uh, the fall semester, that's the gray and yellow bars here. We did see uh, these, uh, these data hover around the 50% mark, but there were significant differences between uh, graduate and undergraduate students where the graduate students felt more prepared and better supported. Similarly, the international students did as well feel better supported and more prepared. In terms of uh, uh, who to contact for technical issues, it uh, seems we, we have a little bit of work to do there. In terms of our platforms, uh, our learning management system is Brightspace. Uh, was quite used before the pandemic, but right now the features therein are, are leveraged ever more um, and relatively seen as relatively easy to use by our students. These statistics are almost uh, uh, identical by uh, as seen by our instructors, so they're very similar to these as well. Um, Zoom, the most used web conferencing platform. Um, and this was the case, even though it wasn't an enterprise license, it wasn't a, um, a major tool that we had as an institution at that time of transition. We had Adobe Connect and Microsoft Teams, although instructors went on their own uh, or with their faculties to acquire Zoom, which we of course learned from. All of which were relatively easy to use, although some slight differences between web conferencing platforms. In terms of features, what we see here is that uh, students and instructors, generally speaking, see uh, uh, their usage in a similar way. The reason why that's amplified by students is likely because they were thinking about the five courses they uh, were transitioning in, whereas instructors, generally their average uh, instructional course load was about two. So because of that difference, we may see that, uh, we think that might have an impact on that, uh, on that difference there. In terms of helpfulness um, and perceived helpfulness uh, for student learning, uh, similar overall between the instructors and the students. Uh, students tend to see things a little bit more helpful. They spoke at great length to the variety of features being used and that was a positive thing that they uh, felt should be applied in future courses. Generally, synchronous video classes uh, and recordings were, were generally the most used. Um, in terms of instructional approaches overall, um, huge mention of the posting of pre-recorded videos. Students mentioned that at, you know, at a great level uh, in the open-ended comments. Uh, but in terms of more participatory uh, and engaging activities, interactive activities, these were experienced less, used less by instructors. Um, we wonder if there might be a difference between that urgent shift and uh, data to come if we were to collect it again to see if this was leveraged a little bit more. Uh, but students commented to a great extent that they were most helpful when well designed and integrated into uh, the course um, uh, with clear instructions and very strategically done. That was an emphasis in uh, the student uh, open-ended comments. Now, in terms of challenges, we're going to look at the instructor challenges. They were really uh, revolving around technology and the use of technology. 
uh, deciding what technology to use, problems with technology as they were facilitating their courses. Whereas conversely with students, their major and top challenges were lack of interaction with the instructor among their fellow students uh, and in general. But overall, uh, um, it was interesting to take note of this and to be able to, to uh, dissect this into the supports that we were able to put in place uh, following that. We did see some differences between English respondents and Francophone respondents, as well as between full-time and part-time faculty members that were of note, particularly that the full-time faculty members felt more challenged uh, by a series of issues than the part-timers. In terms of supports here for instructors, over 50% of instructors were using the supports that were uh, um, put, put out to them, uh, which was a good sign. Uh, for the most part, they felt they were generally quite helpful, which was equally good, particularly supports where they could get an immediate response, uh, uh, whether it was a guide or, or personalized individual response, uh, came up a lot in the open-ended questions. Uh, yet again, a bit of a difference between the full-time and part-time professors and how they, they see that uh, as helpful. One of the questions we asked of students was, what was one tip they could offer their instructors who were transitioning online? Uh, and these were the ranked order in terms of frequency of the thematic analysis done on those open-ended responses. So record and post synchronous lectures in Brightspace so that they can review. Number one thing, be present to humanize the experience in synchronous and recorded videos. Uh, also, strategically plan and use interactive features in your courses more. Uh, think about how you can engage students that way. That was a big one in the open-ended comments. Organize and provide content ahead of time to help students with their time management. And lastly, be accessible and approachable as best as possible uh, uh, for students in this capacity. Um, those were the top ones that emerged. Now, if you want to dig into this data a little bit more, uh, we'd be pleased for you to do that and to also share with us your comments. We have an infographic here, as well as a synthesis summary and uh, a little summary for each of the sur three th surveys, which will be uh, available here in this uh, presentation webpage. We learned a lot from these uh, uh, different uh, surveys. We had to take actions uh, during, uh, you know, these. Uh, uh, during the spring, the summer se uh, semester, uh, to better prepare our uh, faculty, to better support uh, our faculty and our students. One of the actions we, we, we took was uh, the acquisition of Zoom. Uh, here again, we were at first hesitating uh, uh, because we had other, other tools uh, like Teams uh, or, or Adobe Connect. However, pushed by uh, uh, the faculty who were really uh, acquiring uh, individually licenses, we decided to uh, acquire licenses for the university uh, and also because we were a bit more reassured about the question of security uh, uh, with Zoom. We also had a lot of debate, uh, discussion uh, about acquiring uh, online proctoring software, uh, again, again uh, because of uh, some uh, security, some uh, privacy issue. Um, however, we discussed, we reflected, uh, and uh, we decided to uh, acquire one uh, online proctoring software. However, we also uh, worked a lot with the faculty so that we could uh, propose some alternative ways of uh, uh, evaluating the learning of the, of the students. We also hired um, a lot more um, uh, professionals to help our faculty to uh, develop their online courses to support our students. Uh, so instructional designers, uh, web developers, uh, online course developers, uh, tech, technical uh, support people. So uh, uh, that has been uh, uh, very, uh, also very enriching to uh, bring these new uh, people, uh, you know, professional on campus and to, uh, to work with us. What we've done also is that we've implemented uh, uh, different uh, models of support, one of which um, has been quite successful, the, the distributed model of, uh, of support, which means that uh, we have dedicate, dedicated one resource from our teaching and learning support service, one instructional designer uh, per uh, faculty. We have 10 faculties on campus. Uh, and uh, this dedicated person has been working um, with uh, the, the professors of specific faculties. Has been very useful because 
um, uh, the more the, 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 the instructional designer dedicated to this faculty was working with the professors of this, facu of, of this specific faculty, the more they could understand each other, um, the more our specialist was able to understand also the culture and the specificity of the disciplines of this, uh, of this faculty. Uh, and so the result has been uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very uh, positive in, uh, in that sense. If you are interested to learn more about this model, this distributed model, click on the link and uh, you will access an article that we've written about. Uh, we, are f of course, uh, uh, go on uh, our reflection because, uh, uh, I mean, uh, <laughs> the online and remote teaching and learning goes on. So. Uh, uh, we are still learning uh, and we are still reflecting on how to better address the needs of our Canadian students, our international students. Those surveys have been very important and we will again uh, have this service, conduct these sur surveys in the fall so that we, in November, so that we uh, better understand also what's happening uh, during the fall. I mean, in the summer, those surveys were more, you know, on the reactive mode. Uh, people very quickly had to get used to uh, this uh, new uh, environment for, uh, for teaching and for learning. Um, and so that's why we did those surveys to better understand how they were reacted. However, now that we are, uh, that uh, our professors master better the technologies, that uh, all the work on instructional design has been done for our courses, that the support has been, uh, um, uh, has been uh, improved also in terms of uh, support for our students and uh, so uh, we want to better understand now uh, in the fall uh, how again uh, this experience is lived by our community so that's why we will do again these uh, these surveys and also to better understand the, the the differences between our populations francophone population anglophone population as the first surveys that, that you know uh, show that sometimes we see difference in the, in the responses uh, recommendations, so uh, the data that we have and going on with collecting data is crucial, it's essential, it's really what support all the decisions that we are making, so we go on uh, really collecting uh, every type, every sort of data uh, so that it helps us to interpret um, and to better analyze the situation. What was very important is the fact that we uh, surveyed the professors, the students and the teaching assistants. So we are able actually to triangulate the, the findings of these, research, uh, of these uh, uh, surveys and also to go deeper at understanding uh, their uh, their perspective. So this tri triangulation is very important and we will do it again uh, in the fall. Uh, one key element, extremely positive element, but also crucial so that we can go on really response to the need of our community has been the, uh, the collaboration uh, which, uh, uh, you know, uh, came out of this uh, pandemic. Um, you know, the, uh, the fact that all the different sectors, the different faculties, came together and together we worked at solutions, together we worked at developing resources, together we worked at bringing support, uh, support from our teaching and learning support services or peer coaching from our faculty or all the support that uh, peer mentoring from the students has been very uh, important. So that's why we created a new strategic committee for academic support and this new strategic committee has represented of all the stakeholders in our community uh, involved with support of students, of professors, of teaching assistants, so that together we can work and bring the solutions. A big example has been the creation of the uh, academic uh, support we call GPS for the students, has been developed by student affairs with the academic support of the students, but also with the teaching and learning support uh, service, so that again the perspective of professors, the perspective of students, has been enriching this uh, uh, portal for the, for the students. So the work is not finished. Uh, we are going on. Uh, we're going on collecting data and interpreting this data. 
but I have to say that um, the stories that we have from the from the community from the campus are fascinating. Yeah, they certainly are, and uh, we uh, are pleased to share this with you. Uh, please uh, take a look at some of these reports that we've uh, we've appended to this presentation. We'd love to hear from you, your comments, and if you're doing similar things, perhaps work uh, with you to help make sense of this. Uh, uh, transition experience and uh, online modalities uh, moving ahead. So please feel free to contact uh, myself and Aline uh, moving ahead. And if you'd like to use this survey or any data therein, uh, uh, we're happy to chat about that. Uh, thanks again. Thank you.